Welcome everybody to Austin, Texas. I have the great Sandy Monroe Ooh. here with me, my thank birthday you. brother. Yep. We're thank you so much for coming <laughs> yeah. in. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for and thanks, uh, thanks to our friend here at Cybertruck. Uh, these guys uh, lent you the car. Yeah, absolutely, Cybertruck ATX. They are a Cybertruck rental company out here in Austin, Texas. They let us borrow their Cybertruck for the day, so we can have. Sandy Monroe talk about the Cybertruck while we have a Cybertruck. How about cool. that? So Can't thank you very either. much to the guys there. Yeah. Um, and then do you want to tell us a little bit about what Monroe and Associates does, Sandy? Uh, uh, yeah, okay. So Monroe, Monroe and Associates actually um, has three kind of distinct, um, mm, uh, I guess, businesses. One is uh, new product development. <laughs> For new product development, we work on everything from, like right now, we have things like uh, lawnmowers, um, all kinds of different types of cars, um, anything you could imagine, medical devices. We've got a whole bunch of these things, including uh, tiny houses. So we've got a whole bunch of things going on, and that's kind of like where the bread and butter is. Yeah. Then we also do the um, uh, benchmarking, which is kind of like what we're everybody kind of knows us for. Yeah. So we'll take a vehicle like this, tear it all down, cost it tell you what all the materials are, the science that's in back of it. And uh, many of the uh, OEMs, like the bigger car companies will buy those. And then the, uh, and then the last one is, uh, is uh, a pure costing. Um, people bring us products, they wanna know what the accurate costs are, and we'll do that. And like I said, we can do everything from a tiny house to uh, an aircraft or whatever. It doesn't really matter, we've got all kinds of algorithms to, yeah. to make those kinds of things happen. Awesome, yeah. yeah. And and one of my favorite things about Monroe and Associates is all the teardowns you guys have done with the EVs. And yeah. uh, we know if you follow their channel closely, you have your Cybertruck finally. I do. Finally. So you went to the unveil, you've had your reservation for a long time, you have one personal, you have one for Monroe and Associates as well that you're starting to tear down. Yeah. Uh, now that you've had it for a little bit of time, uh, let us know your sort of where your head is at as far as how the truck, uh, what kind of job Tesla has done with the truck as far as quality, what it looks like, what it feels like, and then we'll start getting into the specifics with your teardown and whatnot. So yeah. where's where's your God at? Where's your head at as far as what Tesla has done with this truck? Okay, so first off, let's talk about um, the quality aspect or yeah. whatever. So I just did a fit and finish assessment and I have two of these things now. Yeah. And um, basically I'm looking at this as very low production rates and that's usually where you have bad quality. As you're ramping up, people don't quite know what they're supposed to be doing. And However, on this one, I was just looking at the same thing. So I don't have my, my little gap yeah. gauge, but um, my fingers are pretty, uh, pretty accurate. And uh, this is exactly the same. So if you look at the little crease on my finger, you only see one yeah. crease. Yeah. And that's because each one of these gaps is exactly the same. When you look at this gap here, where you got this joint, this is really hard to do. So you got flat stock and you're trying to line it up with an edge and I can get my my thumbnail in there yeah. uh, on this side and that side, both of them are the same. Now on mine, on the two we have, yeah. there is no gap. How they did that is way beyond me. I have no idea, but I can tell you that with all these flat surfaces, a good, another good thing. Yeah. If you look down here, okay, and I haven't done this yet, but it's just the same. Have a look right along that crease. I'll get out of the way so Eric can have a look at right along this crease. It's dead accurate, dead accurate all the way to the tail. This is really hard to do. Yeah. And they've done a bang up job. So, so can you explain why it's difficult to do? Because it's flat. Because it's flat. It's yeah. Flat. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to keep flat things flat. A curvy's. Uh, I mean, there's there's two kinds of uh, of images you can have. These are called style lines. I prefer beauty lines if yeah. I'm designing it. And the reason I want beauty lines is because if they don't match up, yeah, your eye can't. It's not perceptible. Yeah. This. This is a nightmare mm. uh, under normal circumstances, but they've done a bang up job. Nice. I, uh, I can tell you for sure that when I saw the truck for the first time, um, I, was, I was one of those guys, that's it, I want that. I, yeah. I love that look, Yeah. okay? 
But my big concern was going to be how they're going to keep those style lines. Yeah. And you've done a brilliant job. That's a brilliant awesome. job. Now, this one's been wrapped. Mine hasn't. So okay. it's hard to say what they did or how they did it. Yeah. Or maybe why that, that's why there might be a thumbnail gap over there. Yeah. But uh, but I will tell you for sure that this this looks brilliant. I yeah. uh, I actually kind of like the... Uh, the wrap on this, I right? Look, yeah. yeah. I have no idea how they did it. But, Shout out to Bespoke. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The guys that partnered with Cybertruck ATX to put the wrap on the truck, make sure you check them out. Yeah, yeah the, the one thing that I, and I don't know if, if you would agree with this statement. So I've been driving Tesla since 2016 and I've, and I've had exposure to all the early runs from yeah. Tesla, Model 3, Model X, Model S, yeah. Model Y. To me, Cybertruck, and I'm trying to be objective here, it seems like it's the, the best job Tesla has done to release a product uh, the first batch of it with 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 good quality, whereas the other ones yeah. had a little bit of a give a and take bit? in areas. Okay, so um, <laughs> especially anybody, <Model> three. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah. when when I got the first truck, it was in I think it was 2016 or something like 2017. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure, but anyways, oh man, alive gaps. Yeah. You could see them from Mars. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was like horrible. The seats, my God. So at the end of the day, they've progressed from. Maybe one of the, um, you know, I think I said something about, you know, it was like a 1980s Kia or something like that. Yeah. To the point now where I'll bet you dollars to donuts, nobody is going to come out with a product that's going to look like this with this kind of uh, with this kind of accuracy. Yeah. This is going to be really, really tough for anybody to jump into and follow along. Yeah. Lots of people have started making sketches. I can do that all day long. I can be on a CAD machine and I can give you all kinds of things that can't be possible. Right. But with these guys, here it is. It's right now. Yeah. Well, another thing we were talking about too quality wise, uh, the tonneau cover. I wanted to hit that a little bit if we can. Sure. Um, you you were explaining before before we went live that the style of uh, manufacture or the style yeah. of tonneau that this is is unique to Tesla, especially if you compare it to a Rivian. They're both yeah. they both uh, offer the same sort of usability. But what's special about this tonneau cover that well, makes it unique? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so these are called uh, tonneau. Uh, sorry, uh, timbre doors. Yeah. And um, when uh, so we use them a lot in the uh, aircraft world. Yeah. Um, and um, and the thing about them is you have to keep them kind of close to what you'd see on a roll top desk. That's where they, they used to be really popular then. Yeah. This is just like that. This thing is rugged. I mean, you can get 350 pounds on top of here. Um, I didn't do it, but I seen um, on the uh, the one that we're tearing it down. Yeah. People have gone up there and jumped up and down to see if it really is 350 pounds. Yeah. But to make that work, you have to have a very short distance. Yeah. Okay. So this is like about 40 millimeters or something like that, maybe less. Anyhow, at the end of the day, this, this is the way to go. The, the Rivian's uh, ta uh, uh, timbre door is like about four inches. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so what happens is you can get caught and, the play in there is you have to make it loose enough so that it'll actually fold when it goes this goes down into a trough anyways you have to make it loose enough so that it'll actually move and fall down and that's why uh that's one of the reasons why getting a powered uh roof or sorry a timbre door yeah on your rivian they're they're really not that's actually not a tam it's a timbre door but they call it a they call it a uh, tonneau cover Anyhow, at the end of the day, it's kind of tough. Okay. That's, uh, and simply because it's just it's just too wide. Yeah. You're, you're, um, there's a thing called an R, R over D ratio or what? It doesn't really matter. But anyways, that ratio has to be um, precise and it has to be, um, you can't have a lot of slop in it. Got so it. So this is, this is the way to go. Got it. Yeah. Do you think there is, uh, you know, one of the things that I've heard is that there's concerns about dur long term durability because it's a mechanical Why? piece and, you know, it has it's maybe uh, something that's not very common in cars. Uh, have you do you have any opinions on that? I'm curious to get your take as far as do you think this is going to be something that's going to keep running for the next few years or it'll it'll you have any run, concerns. It'll run as long as you'll have the car. Yeah. The, the big problem with this is that's really expensive. It's expensive. This yeah. Is this is what real? that's why you don't see them. These are expensive. Yeah. Um, it's much cheaper to buy a piece of canvas and put some snaps on it. Yeah. Okay. So this, 
again, you get back to the styling and you get back to the engineering and yeah, holy mackerel. This is a, this is a very, this would not be the easiest thing on the planet to, uh, to build. Yeah. And, um, and certainly from a design standpoint or an engineering standpoint, yeah, you, you're going to have your days, uh, uh, filled with excitement, trying to make sure that everything works on the factory floor, tuning this in, <laughs> you got to have a good crew to turn in mm. this kind of, uh, this kind of, uh, accuracy. Yeah. And like I say, um, people are saying, why don't they ramp up faster? Well, uh, maybe they want to make sure that everything is tuned in properly. And the other thing is one of the reasons that I know that this is going to be, um, easier for Tesla than it is anybody else. They have one supplier for the sheet metal mm. and they test that thing every time they get, you know, a new, uh, a new bunch of uh, reels, they come in yeah. big round. Anyways, every time they get a, a new set of reels before they start uncoiling them, they make a sample. They make sure that it's exactly the same material as what they want. That way, when it comes to the uncoilers yep. and through the, uh, they've got a, straighteners and, and they've got some fancy little thing that we've got to try and figure out more on, but they take, they cold roll it to make it so that it's austenitic. That's kind of impressive. So we're not really sure how they do that. Maybe it's some kind of bainite process. I'm not sure, but usually that takes heat. But yeah. at the end of the day, they make sure that they've got exactly the same material every time. And then you don't wind up like what the normal guys do where uh, every time there's a new purchasing agent, he finds a new cheap steel manufacturer, and the next thing you know, you can't build any damn yeah. thing. You're stuck with um, you're stuck with um, uh, dancing inside the uh, the dies and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and that's I mean <laughs> for the long term of this vehicle, it's it's key for them I think to have that one supplier yeah. or at the minimum maybe a maximum of two suppliers that are on the same page to try and help them reach that sort of two hundred fifty thousand unit plan that they have long term. Yeah. Um, what are some things? So how far along are you guys on your on your teardown uh, on this truck so far? Well, to, to be quite frank, I don't know because okay. um, I wasn't in the office for a couple of days. OK, my guess is they have probably got it up on the hoist. They probably got uh, the wheels off. Yeah. Um, maybe they've uh, taken out some of the suspension. Suspension is very unique on this. Yeah, uh, especially in the front. Um, uh, they probably got that going and from what I can gather, they want to take and look at a lot of the electronics and whatnot. So we've got a another one of our companies that we are partners with, uh, 3IS, yeah. and they're uh, helping us out with some of that stuff. So gotcha. we, it's not just Monroe taking this thing to pieces. It's, yeah. um, there, there's three or four different companies that are helping us out. Gotcha. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So now that you've had the the, the truck for a, for a few few days, I think a couple of weeks now, right? Since you picked up the the first. No, been I, uh, the, the, the fifth, the fifth was, uh, was okay. when we picked up the first one but and nine Tuesday was when I picked up the second one. Gotcha. So the second one, I got a chance to drive it to um, <clears throat> Grand Rapids. I think that's about 80 miles away. So I got, yeah. I got some We time almost in got uh, run off the road a few yeah, times. Yeah, three times. <laughs> three times a buck. People, <laughs> they're driving and going like this and they're coming closer and closer and I'm going, geez. Yeah. So finally, I was, uh, I was on the soft shoulder. Yeah. I, I knew that there'd be some looky lose and whatnot. I didn't yeah. realize that it was going to be that uh, exciting. Yeah. What yeah. stuck? So what stuck <clears throat> out from that uh, off-road experience with the truck? Any any insight you can give us? That anything? It, it was no out? big nothing because okay. this has got uh, this is steer by wire. Yeah. So you don't get a lot of um, things that would make the steering wheel jerk because there's no there's no uh, there's communication because but it's electric and electronic. Yeah. And it's not, it, it doesn't have a big shaft, an intermediate, an I shaft to call it, an intermediate shaft between the steering wheel and the, uh, and the steering mechanism in the front. Yeah. So um, you go off road, you get feedback. I mean, you can tell that you're going into big ruts and whatnot. Yeah. But it isn't tearing the steering wheel out of your hand. Gotcha. That kind of thing. So a lot of steer by wire is. Yeah. is a good idea is it would you say that it's like for for somebody who has <clears throat> never done off-roading would you say a steer by wire system would make it easier to do off-roading or is it just a feel thing is it a preference thing okay so anything? i haven't been off-road with mine yet um, yeah. next week i'm going to go to jordan gardner rocha one of the guys at work 
Um, we're going to go to his. He got a 30 acres of property. Yeah. And uh, it sounds like it's rugged. It used to be a farm. It was abandoned, whatever. Anyways, I'm going to get off there and uh, and really do a downtown job on it. Cool. Something similar to what I did with the Rivian. Yeah. And uh, the Rivian beats everything up till now. I mean, there's no there's no Wrangler, have a great Rubicon, truck, those whatever. Guys. Yeah. They, they they do. They have they really a fabulous do. truck. Yeah. Um, and I think it's right now, anyway, the best off road vehicle. Period. Yeah. We'll see what happens when I get this off. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Should we look at the interior a little bit? Sure. Right here? Why yeah. not? Yeah. So we'll look at the. Uh, we'll start with the back. I guess we're closer. Um, so, any any commentary as far as the quality of materials that Tesla's <laughs> used now that you've had yours for a little bit, you've been yeah. able to sort of look around. Anything stick out that uh, you want to comment on? Everything here again is picture perfect. All these gaps are perfect. Everything everything is brilliantly done. I have no idea who the supply community is for this, but I can tell you for sure, this is really, really well done. One of the other things that, while we're looking at this, this is welded to that. And if you wanna have a look at craftsmanship, have a look at right what you're seeing, right where my fingernail is. That's a laser weld. So this door is done entirely different than everybody, everybody else would use a hemming situation. So you take this and you wrap it over the top of the door inner, we call it. And, um, and then it's usually, um, it's usually adhesively held in place. Yeah. This one, if there's adhesive, it's probably right there. See this bump right here? Yeah. Okay, that might be where it is, but this is laser welded and I cannot find even a pinhole. These things are really, this is brilliant. And you've got to be very, very careful because that has to go fast enough so that it doesn't change the material characteristics and I can't have bleed through. Okay. Okay. Normally if you weld, you get a blue mark on the outside. Yeah. Not going to be very good for you, but I can't find, I can see the little blue mark here. Okay. That's trace over. So you weld here and that little bit of trace, mm. but there's nothing on the other side. Mm. That's dead nuts, okay? That's yeah. the that's the best you're gonna get. Are there any advantages to using this method versus a traditional method or is yeah. it? Yeah, okay. oh my God, if I use this, yeah. I mean, it would be a, a, a fabulous, uh, uh, better as far as, uh, as far as construction and whatnot is concerned, but okay. laser welding is expensive, expensive compared to zoot, 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 or crunch yeah. one, one shot basically gives you the hem. Yeah. But this, this is how you keep things straight and parallel. This is how you, um, this is how, if, if I was up to me yeah. and, uh, and price was no limit, this would be my first choice. Cool. Okay. So now that, that what's interesting is so we looked at the tonneau cover. We know this is going to be a, this is one of the more pricier things on the truck. The process that they're taking here obviously is going to be pricier than the, than the average sort of yeah. typical truck. And of course, I think a lot of that is because they, whatever, the, the choice of material that they had with the stainless steel, obviously, and you know, they, they made a, a choice to have a tonneau cover as well. It's gonna add those things to it. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm wondering about is, you know, one of the things that Tesla has talked about was removing the paint shop from, from the process was gonna allow them yeah. to bring the cost down. But it almost feels like like, would you agree with the statement that Tesla, the, the money they save with the with the paint shop, they've decided to sort of build costs somewhere else? Or do you think they'll be able to achieve sort of their initial like targets as far as getting the costs down from a manufacturing perspective? Okay, How are you so about that? Uh, for painting a car, it can go anywhere from at the very, very low end, about 300 bucks all the way up to, if you want to go crazy, a thousand bucks Yeah, to paint the car. Okay, so this um, this type of material, we haven't got to cost it out yet, but stainless steel that's austenitic, dollars per pound. Okay, when you go to ordinary 1020L, which is kind of like what everybody uses. Yeah. 1020 is like, it just barely steel, and the L stands for lead. You put lead in it so that when you stamp it, it does, it'll stretch and things like that. Yeah. That's That's pennies per pound, okay? So you got dollars per pound or yeah. pennies per pound. How that works out, I won't know until we actually have done um, the estimation, but my yeah. guess is the stainless steel is still gonna be more expensive than uh, than mild steel, but I'm not, that's just a guess. Yeah. And I'm not a guesser. I really rather have, uh, I like hard numbers. I'm an engineer, I want numbers. Right. I don't, not a <laughs> not an analyst and I'm not yeah. a salesman or whatever. Yeah. So. Um, 
The, the rear seats is, this looks like it's a new sort of approach by Tesla as well. They have sort of the bucket seat style-ish kind of in the back oh, here. Um, you know, they have the- Yeah, but that's just for support. this. So okay. you can't make this work unless, unless, uh, unless you have that kind of a seat. Right, right. So at the end of the day, <clears throat> having it so that it can fold up and you can put more stuff in here, um, that's that's kind of like why you're what you're looking at here. Yeah. And let me put that back down. Yeah, goes back down. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Okay. And then obviously they got the the screen back there too. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Now, it's it works seem seemingly it works really well for everybody except Eric. Um, <laughs> who could Eric not was find, having a tough time yes. finding the charging, the charging. Look at how cool. Yeah. Low. Eric was not very happy. We yeah. kept telling him it's back there. He's like, no, it's not. We're like, yeah, it is. <laughs> he just wouldn't go in and crawl around. I mean, that's the problem. Yeah, I, mean, I, I could definitely see what he's talking about when you're sitting there. It's a little bit, you know, you're sitting down. It's well, it has, it, no, like, there's more to it than that. It has you gotta, something like, to do with this it. part, right? <laughs> <laughs> you got to look for it. So definitely, it's a, it, you're blind. And I could totally see why Eric was having an issue, but... Well, I yeah, told him it was there. right under, but yeah, he, yeah. he just wouldn't, he never, yeah. like everybody else in Monroe, nobody listens to me. The other thing I noticed too, so like the, when when you shut the, 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 the doors, yeah, it, this is by far one of the more solid feeling doors that I felt yeah. on a truck or a car really. And I think a lot of it is because of the weight, but I think a, another part wow. too is I think maybe there's the way it's this the glass, way it closes. the way it closes, right? Yeah. How much engineering goes into how a door closes? Is there is there a, a lot. lot of attention paid? Talk to yeah. me a little bit about that. that and that's that's kind of like why the glass goes down a little bit because if I don't do that, then I'm trying to suck against um, uh, the vacuum that'll be inside. And yeah. having it down like that, when I close the door and it goes up, uh, if if this is really really well sealed, I mean, there's virtually no noise inside. Yeah. This is as quiet as a tomb. This is what maybe the most quiet vehicle, certainly the most quiet truck I've ever been in. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and a lot of that has to do with here. Let's do the yeah. the glass thing here. See that glass? Okay, so you see there's one kind of glass here and then another one there. And in in between there's a chunk of uh, clear plastic. Uh, not everybody does that in the rear seat. And this. This is extra heavy duty, yeah. so the the noise abatement here because of that glass is is huge. Yeah. So, so you've got something that seals really well. These are good seals. These are bulb seals, and these are um, these are really nice. Um, yeah. They uh, they, they seem they, really they seem thicker job. and bigger than what I see on my Model Y. Uh, they seem uh, yeah, a they bit are. More heavy duty. Yeah, this is kind of like what you you'd find in a in a big truck. Like yeah. the the Lightning has stuff like this. This is kind of uh, uh, the the primo kind okay. of uh, kind of ceiling. Is that an NVH choice or is it like Double. an off? Okay. So NVH is one, but water uh, is something one. not your friend ever. Yeah. So and NVH for those that are not familiar, noise vibration not, yeah. Hard, uh, yeah, harshness. harshness. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and of course, so if this is something that's meant to be taken off road, you'll want good uh, uh, seal from the. Especially if you're yeah. going in water. So yeah. when you have something like this. I'm expecting I'm going to be able to be in the water to about that depth. Uh huh. Okay. I don't Maybe want to go to the, the bed line. Suspension, actually, while you do that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's bring it all the way up. All the way up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going extract. I think extract is the highest. Okay. Good. Yeah. Well, it's moving up. So you know what's good about this is first off, look at the clearance uh, between um, the uh, bottom of the rockers and the center line of the wheel. That's uh, the first thing that we should notice. And it looks to me fairly level. I think that should be the same as the one I've got. And it is. So um, so that's the first thing. Second thing is, look at this, this knuckle here. Okay, so one of the things that we noticed was, this is a single layer, single layer upper control arm. And this knuckle is gigantor. It is huge. So. When you get into a situation like uh, when you're off-roading and whatnot, most of the most of the uh, stuff that you're going to need to absorb yeah. is going to be in the lower A arm, that that thing down there, down, and down it there. looks yeah. kind of like an A. This knuckle is attached to that and attached to this. All the real um, uh, excitement, if you like, is down below. This one here just keeps things in tension. Tension. So. You really don't need to have 
normally you'd have this with a welded cap and everything. Yeah. But because the because this thing has got that long arm, the the long knuckle arm, <laughs> it, it it virtually doesn't see much. So when we first saw it, was, oh my god! And then we started thinking about it, and we said, hey, you know what? That's just good engineering. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So that so how how common is this in other trucks? Is this a is this a unique choice big, because of this? The big truck, again, I go back to the uh, Lightning. Yeah. It has something as long as that, but yeah. up here, it's a uh, double. It's a, this is it's double a, right here. two castings welded together. Yeah. Oh, um, sorry, two stampings welded together. Okay, got it. And then as far as the 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 pump, it's like this, the air pump. That's your air, yeah. air suspension the air system. Suspension. Yeah. Um, any, anything additional you've learned, anything you've felt? Because one of the things that no, I- We haven't taken it apart that far yet, that far or at yet. least not for yeah. me. So I haven't seen what's going on in there, but yeah. this looks very similar to what you'd find on the um, um, uh, the the Ram. Yeah. The Ram brought out air suspension system basically for pickup trucks first. Yeah. And man, we thought it was brilliant. It just left everybody in the dust. Yeah. So uh, when when that came out, and then GM brought the Silverado, the new Silverado out about the same time. Yeah. Oh man, it was just no. It was it was if it was sad it really was yeah. because the Silverado came out kind of bouncy and whatnot yeah. and the and the uh, the Ram was just phenomenally right phenomenally good yeah because I think one of the biggest things so my wife and I took this for a little bit of a ride this morning and the one thing that I it, it, it's hard to explain you know I'm not a truck guy but I heard and I saw videos about how you know how big of a difference an air suspension makes especially in a, in a car like this, a pickup truck. And it's, it really seems like it, it added a new type of, I don't know, like right, right. Dimension is the word dimension. you're searching for. Yeah, yeah it's a it's, different it's dimension. It's unique to this yeah. size of vehicle. And yeah. like, I, I heard the ramp system is excellent as well, but it's, it's, it's very interesting to actually experience it hands on, especially with the steer by wire system. It feels right. like, and I was talking to you in the car a little bit before this too. It just feels like you're, you have the, this giant beast tank thing that yeah. actually is super responsive and it rides yeah. real nice, you know? Yeah. It's just a very interesting mix of well, characteristics, It's you because know? of a lot of different um, uh, attributes that are in this vehicle. So yeah. the air suspension is great. Steer by wire is even better. This thing is also, because it's quickly responsive and whatnot, that has a lot to do with the ethernet loop that's in this as well. Believe it or not, some people, myself maybe, when we're when we're so for instance driving this compared to the lightning or the rivian or the ram or whatever this is like a vastly different kind of ride it is yeah. um this is huge this thing is a big truck i i was at the i belong to the detroit athletic club and when I was trying to get into the parking lot, yeah, holy mackerel! I folded the the, the mirrors in. <laughs> I I didn't know I was going to make it. Is yeah. this, but you know what made it worthwhile or made it happen? No, that rear wheel steering. Right there. This turns uh, this monster into um, into uh, I don't want to say a, a sports car, but it definitely makes a difference. It definitely makes a huge difference when you're trying to get into tight parking and things yeah. like that. This Just is getting brilliant. up here it felt very easy. You know, it wasn't super tight getting around. You know, this was a yeah. very nicely let out parking and, deck. And, but and quite frankly, when um, I let some of the other guys drive this thing, especially the guys that are used to driving a, a big giant pickup truck, yeah, they said, "Hey, I don't know what's going on here." And and this is not even. I'm told <clears throat> that this is going to get even more aggressive. So yeah, right now we yeah. haven't we haven't tested it out, but that looks like it's tipped, and that looks like maybe two or three degrees. Yeah, um, and that might be all that we're getting out of it right now. But I've heard from a lot of people. I don't know if it's true or not, but this may go to about maybe nine to eleven degrees, depending on who I've talked to. Yeah, if that's the case, oh man. That would be like a sports car. That I, would make I a could, big difference. Oh, huge, you don't even have to huge. change the angle on the front. Just change the angle on the back. No, no, it go, it's oh, a ratio would, between what I'm doing right. here and what I'm doing there. Right. So you have this thing tipped over quite a ways. So that gave me or gave you the ability to tip this rear wheel a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So when you're going slow, that, that'll happen. When you're going fast, you, you, you don't want yeah, You don't want to mess with that. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of like what we're doing here. Got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, okay. So 
let me ask you this. As far as what, um, what's one thing that has surprised you so far in having the Cybertruck that you initially didn't think about or it was something that, you know, it kind of, you know, came out of nowhere. Is there something that took you by surprise since you've taken delivery? Um, Positive or negative? Um, well, the negative surprise was it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have ADAS. Um, and um, uh, I didn't know that because when I got into it initially, I want to drive the car. I yeah. don't want the car to drive me. So I didn't really do anything until I was gone this kind of boring trip to, to drive up to uh, Grand Rapids in Michigan. And, uh, and I'm pushing buttons and whatnot. And apparently I was told it doesn't have ADAS or autopilot, uh, but I wasn't paying attention. I was mostly <laughs> rubbing the side of But the big surprise is what happens when you pull in to charge. So I have the only right now because uh, Dirty Tesla is out. Um, out of on Michigan. A, on a, yeah, he's yeah. Uh, he's out on a, a road trip. Shout out Dirty Tesla. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but but these guys, um, this one in Michigan, nobody knows what the hell it is. Nobody. Right. And so I drove in to get a, a charge, and um, I went in and um, and um, I thought, well, what's doing that? I'll, I'm going to go and grab a, something to eat. So I went to Chick Fil A and um, I went in, got my lunch, ate it, came back out, and oh my God, somebody must have brought a school bus full of kids. <laughs> I walked out, I looked at it, and the whole car is completely surrounded oh, by all man. these kids. And I got little handprints like Everywhere. up to there. <laughs> but anyways, at the end of the day, that was a big surprise okay. for me anyway, that was a big yeah. deal. Yeah. And then, go ahead, oh, no, go go, ahead. No, no, go, go. Well, anyways, what did you, uh, I'll come, I can come back. Uh, I was going to be, so what I wanted to mention, what you were talking about surprises, something that took you by surprise, uh, that not having ADAS was one. The other thing you were also mentioned, I want to talk about the headlights for a second too, but the other thing you mentioned too was the camera in the back, like when we were reversing, doesn't have a beep thing yeah, as well. Yeah, that that's was another missing thing. as well, but I think yeah. that that's part of the- um, Autopilot the, uh, suite probably. Oh, by the way, the other thing, do not, don't turn on the security camera. Because or the computer, the security it's system. Be on 24/7. <laughs> it sucks the juice out of it. So I came, I parked in at the. Um, yeah. I was at a Hilton, and I I I parked at the uh, in the special parking garage, right? Yeah. Well, somebody let everybody on the planet know that uh, there's a cyber truck in there. All night that thing was on. Oh, so man. I started off with 121 miles. I get up the next morning and it says. You should charge like right oh now. God. So I had 27 miles left. No yeah. way. And now I find out that there's another thing. There's that. And there's also, um, if you've got, uh, you know, find me or whatever, what do they call that? A hailing. What's like the, the, oh, the, the GPS thing where it knows no, where it, it knows where you are and then it'll come and pick you oh, up. Oh, the summon. Summon. Yeah. yeah. Summon. Um, if that's on, it also sucks up juice. Mm, okay. That's good. To so, know. Um, I it's a good why. idea. To, I feel like I don't know why it would suck so much. I don't juice, know right? either because it's always it's thinking about it continuously. I guess yeah. Tesla Joy uh, mentioned it. Yeah. Because some guy said, "Hey, I don't understand it. I, I turned off this. I turned off that." And I'm thinking, "Yeah, you good idea." Yeah. But uh, but then she said that it also has something to do with summons. Yeah. Now I haven't had a chance to check that out on mine because I just read it while we were at the airport waiting yeah. for the airplane. So um, I think that there's a lot of information on X that you can probably suck up from here. Right. And I will be looking at it as I'm, I, you know, I'm learning as well. If somebody yeah. figured it out. I think what's interesting, <laughs> though, is like it, it has such a, you know, you think about a truck of this size. By the way, the, the, the battery estimator on the Cybertruck is really freaking good. So I, when I came down to pick it up from the airport, it's at 78 percent. I, I yeah. left with 92. Yeah. I got there with 78. It yeah. was like dead exact. Yeah. And I went through traffic. I went, you know, there was a little bit of wind as well. So I'm wondering if they have any improvements from that perspective too. I don't know about that, but I can tell you that um, driving this in rush hour traffic or whatever, where you're stop and go a lot. Yeah. I started off with 111 miles, okay, on, on, the, on the odometer yeah. or on the gauge that tells me how much, you know, how much battery is left. Um, and, um, I looked and I 75 was a nightmare. I wasn't going to go that way. So I took the other route. What am I? Well, initially I thought it was a big mistake. Yeah. Anyway. So it's stop and go, stop and go. So I go, and then, yeah. Yeah. 
because everybody's there's street lights, there was an accident, all kinds of stuff. So I drove from the office and I got into uh, about where all of this stuff ends on Jocelyn Road. Um, and and I looked down, I'm at 115. How in the hell did I? And I think because when I was going, you know, jogging back and forth, yeah. I was putting more back into the battery than I was taking out to drive forward because I didn't have anything on. It was a nice day. I had the windows rolled up. So how? This, Were you going downhill or something? No. Well, that might be true too. Yeah. But this is a, each one of these is a generator, right? Yeah. And they can put they can put energy back. Yeah. I think I was using so little energy to go forward because everything was stop and go. Yeah. That when I so I I push it a little bit and then it was mm, so yeah. I I go a little bit and yeah. Oh, so man. I'm telling you what I was really <laughs> shocked. Anyway, when I got home, yeah. it was at 110. Okay, wow. So I, I it barely or, used anything. It barely yeah. used anything. Very efficient. Very, very yeah, efficient. Huge. I, I don't know how that works. So that sounds like a perpetual motion machine kind of a <laughs> thing. But at the end of the day, yeah. uh, I don't know how that happened, yeah. but I do know that it I wonder to me. too is maybe maybe the <clears throat> estimator is like uh, taking into account current conditions as well. And it's like, hey, if you're going to and maybe it was a nice day out. So nice I would have said that if Maybe if somebody I was pushing you, in, you didn't even know. Yeah, well, <laughs> if no, if it was cold out, okay, really yeah. cold out, and um, and uh, then the battery warmed up and said, "Oh, I got better yeah, than that." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could happen, but I mean, it was sixty degrees out. Yeah, it was a nice day. That's the battery don't give a damn about sixty. They they like seventy two degrees. Yeah, uh, twenty one Celsius. Anyway, that's what they really like the best. But but at 60 degrees, they're happy as a clam. Yeah. So it was it didn't have anything to do with whether it was hot or cold or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it just it just happened. Wow. Now, how that happened, I don't know. But uh, I'm sure that somebody will be telling you, yeah. and then you can relay it <laughs> on in me. the comment section. And I'm sure it's yeah. going to be I'll send somebody you a text. In, yeah. somebody in grandma's basement on his, <laughs> on, on his <laughs> the sofa that he used to sleep on. <laughs> But anyways, I, I'm very intrigued. I, I'm, I'm very intrigued about how yeah. that could have happened. That's, that, that is strange. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I have theories, but we'll, we'll let the people in the comments section come up with them. Uh, real quick, I, I want to talk about the headlights because I think this is, I don't know, you tell me if this is a, a, like a weird decision by Tesla, but it feels like in places where there's going to be snowfall, those headlights to me feel like are going to get blocked really, really quickly. Do you think that's going to no. be an issue? I've already been in a snowstorm. Yeah, it is no problem. issue? Okay. Interesting. Okay. No, um, the snow and the rain, I've been in both and I never had any problems. Okay, cool. That's good to know. Um, okay. So <laughs> why don't we talk about that big ass windshield wiper? What do you mean? This is what do you this mean? This is thing? Huge. This normal looking thing that's on nah. every other car? So here's <laughs> the thing. Okay, we were talking about GM and um, we got called in when GM was having some serious problems yeah. in the um, in the late eighties and early nineties, mostly the early nineties. And one of the things that I wanted to do on one of their vehicles, a Cadillac, is I wanted to put in a single wiper because yeah. um, uh, Mercedes had one and I thought, hey, this is brilliant. Let's put it in. It costed it out. It didn't save any money, but you only had one wiper and they turned it down. They turned it down because they said, well, it don't work for snow load. And I said, well, wait a minute, it's on a Mercedes. I'm yeah. pretty sure it'll work. Well, we haven't tested it, so we don't want to try it. But this Nobody has ever thought of doing that. <laughs> this thing is a monster. And when I turn this on, like if yeah. I have people that are Should standing I turn around, it on and see yeah, what it looks yeah. like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Yeah. We're we're having fun here, y'all. Yeah. There we go. All right. All right. Now that's a wiper. You know what? Oh wow! Look at that. He's trying to. It looks like you'd hit it out of the park with one of those. <laughs> that, yeah. I can feel the car swaying. <laughs> I can yeah. feel the car <laughs> swaying. It's probably, it's probably got a motor the size yeah. of. I haven't seen underneath here. Yeah. Because uh, can you pop the uh, uh, front the, here? the front, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, can I? I want to. I want to show something. I saw this on a video too, Eric. If you want to come here real quick, I want to show you something. This right here, the way they they let the yeah. I saw it on somebody's video. Look, it's the size of a it's the Cybertruck. It's a Cybertruck. It's a silhouette. How and cool is and that? you know what? That type of artistry is what I die for. Yeah, it's so cool. I mean, that Such is a unique really, little feature. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, if yeah. we go over here, that big giant arm here, 
is going to have something underneath this that's going to probably amaze and delight me. Because really and truly, when you make this go, it looks like an old train thing, you know, the wheels used to go. Like, that's kind of like how this all works in here. Yeah. I can hardly wait. We, I'm not allowed to uh, do anything in advance of yeah. the guys, yeah. but I can hardly wait until we get this off so I can see how that wiper mechanism yeah. works. What do you expect to see? What do I expect to see? Yeah. Um, magic. Okay. I, I mean, I don't know exactly how to make that work. Um, it's plenty heavy duty. There's no question about that. Yeah. But um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how that mechanism works. Yeah. Another yeah. thing I heard about the, the front trunk is that uh, some folks, uh, I mean, I will say that I, I personally expected something a little bit bigger with so a, at least deeper yeah. uh, with this form factor. Yeah. Do you think this is going to be a deal breaker for folks, especially when you have like the Rivian and the F-150 Lightning with, with really, oh, really I'm big. I'm telling you what, the yeah. F-150. Okay, so their front okay, is insane. So here's the thing. Yeah. Um, so uh, I don't need any hate mail. I'm just <laughs> telling the truth. As far as I'm concerned, this truck was made for me. Somebody, a sportsman, occasionally I'll use that uh, back end to take home a two by four or something. Yeah. But at the end of the day, this is going to be my truck to go hunting with. Yeah. This is what I want. Yeah. Is this a work truck? Not to me. Yeah. Okay. If you want a work truck, you want the F-150 Lightning. That thing, I can take concrete bags, throw them in there. I can, I've got lights that illuminate that. If I turned, if I had the lightning in here and it was night, yeah. I could turn that thing on and illuminate out everything. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's got way more doodads. Like we can talk about the, uh, and we should, about the, uh, the the wiring in the back. Yeah, let's do it. And, yeah. and that's great. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> um, this, I, I was expecting to see different. Yeah. Now, let's just see why um, that uh, that this is happening the way it is. Oh, come on, girl. Oh man, this one's really on. Okay, well anyways, I right. can't get it off and I don't want to break anything. <laughs> so here's the deal. Mine don't come worry, off, Chase. <laughs> yeah, mine come off really, really quick and easy. But as soon as you take that cover off, boom, you've got an electronic control panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's right there. There's no way that they could have got any deeper. Mm -hmm. And I would never um, suggest to anyone that you drop down below where this is right now. Right. Uh, I just wouldn't do it. So it is what it is. It's not as big as storage as um, as the um, as the, the lightning uh, or the, the lightning Rivian. or yeah. the Rivian. But yeah. you know what? I don't care. This yeah. uh, this. I think for like if it's a oh this would take my shotguns. So there, there you, go. you go. I'll build a little rack and I can put the shotguns. I in. think what's interesting about the pickup truck form factor is that you know uh, I've seen so many statistics out there that for people that buy pickup trucks, a majority of them don't really utilize the pickup truckness of the truck. It's more like a people carrier, uh, uh, occasional yeah. Home Depot yeah. run. I feel like this kind of helps. Uh, yeah, this is you know, more address. for the this is more for the average guy yeah. that can afford it and yeah. wants something different and is going to be a sportsman. But it's nowhere near as big as the F one fifty Lightning. I mean, the F one fifty Lightning front is it is something else. Yeah, yeah, it really is, is. That is huge. Yeah. yeah. Um, anything over here that that sticks out to you before we check out the wiring in the tr in, in the <coughs> truck? Any well, you see these? this right here. Yeah. These kind of welds or can, whatever. On this uh, these side are too. spot welds. Yeah. Okay, so you can see that the spot welds in there and it's got a little black line around it. <laughs> that's about as perfect as you can get. Okay, yeah. and uh, that that's going to be the hood. Uh, there's a structure look... inside the hood um, inner, and uh, that's what you're looking at there, and so when you look at those, the first thing I do is I want to see if there's any any squirt or squirm that's on these and there's nothing. Okay, so when Tesla first brought out their cars, oh my God, didn't anybody ever clean these tips? Doesn't anybody know what a weld controller is? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now Tesla could give classes to, uh, to BMW on how, how a weld should look and that's the way it should look. That's cool. Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely, I, with this vehicle, and of course, somebody that I, I've been driving exclusively Tesla since 2016, so I'm biased, but it does feel like this product feels like the most mature product they've yeah. put to market. It feels oh, very no. mature. Oh, uh, what? You're wrong. Okay. You have not driven the uh, the new Highlander. That. That's mature. Holy okay. crap. That thing is okay. fabulous. I love that truck, that car. I mean, I I, I mean, the, the Model 3 is a good car. We yeah. had it for a long time and whatnot. Guess what? Sue, Cheryl, my CFO, 
and um, me and I don't know who, I, but there were four of us that drove it around. Uh, Jordan. Yeah. We drove it around for a little while, and um, and I said, and I looked at Cheryl. So Cheryl doesn't like to sip. She she's very tight on money. Yeah. And I said, boy, this is really nice. And she said, when did you buy the Model Three? I don't know, it must be five years ago. She looked at it and she said, that is what we need and that's gonna go. Wow. That's how much of a difference there was. Wow. I mean it sincerely. The yeah. thing is articulate. Um, it's so accurate. I can't believe it. It's a I, yeah. I mean it sincerely. It's the best sedan out there. Wow. They really did a bang up job. Yeah. Really big, big time. And I think and I think it, and I want to talk to you about that too, because I wonder, I wonder how many it feels to me like Tesla is starting to go from this uh, mode of being a quote unquote luxury automaker that's offering really great performance, but they're missing, they were missing some quality pieces. And now as they're maturing, it seems like they're really honing it into the quality aspect. And we can see it with the Cybertruck, we can see yeah. it with the Model 3 Highland. <clears throat> yeah. And I wonder how much of that is in preparation of their compact car to make sure that all those things are like honed in so that when they go to millions of people a year, you don't have a, a yeah. you know a bunch of people complaining about their stuff. You know, I don't know if, well, don't know if there's I, anything I've there. I've been asked for a lot of, that, a lot of people have asked me to speculate on the car. Yeah. To hit $25,000 um, and make money at it, uh, that's uh, pretty tough, especially if it's an electric vehicle. So yeah. I'm not 100% sure I know everything about how it's gonna be done, yeah. but I know one thing for sure. The level of maturity as far as engineering and manufacturing on this vehicle tells me whatever they go to, they're going to have to build it right the first time. They are I not going to have a big giant amount of cars in a parking lot that are looking for some modification or some part missing or something. Yeah. They're going to have to be dead, dead accurate all the time. Yeah. It's going to have to be perfect every, every one. Yeah. And when you have that kind of what we used to call uh, Toyota quality. When you have that, uh, you can you can kick everybody's tail, and you can sell um, inexpensive vehicles and, yeah. uh, and and still make money at it. Yeah. And I believe that it will. Actually, I I heard something today or saw something today that I couldn't believe, and I'm not sure where I read it, but I think it was either the either the Wall Street Journal or the New York. I think it was the New York Times, and he they put Tesla in the same bracket as Boeing. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And that's that's why I'm I'm really I really have a problem with um with the regular press. Yeah. I mean, why don't they put people who maybe have an engineering degree or maybe they talk to an engineer once. That would be a good idea. Yeah. To kind of put this kind of stuff together is just wrong yeah what, it's weird what kind of it's not an objective take I, yeah it's nah, just you, you know, can't get objective yeah if you're not advertising on the tv station or you're not um or you're not um uh, uh, buying ads well then you know they don't they don't want you oh, let's, i don't think it closed okay let me see Is a button here <clears throat> uh-oh i think well, we might have probably to turn me it. yeah yeah, this is like, you know, talking about the the frunk. This is like I I again, I wish I wish they was just a little bit deeper. Well, there it's we either that or the yeah. what I had to put the the electronics yeah. someplace else. Uh let's talk about the wiring in the back and then uh if we have time maybe we'll take some uh we have people ask questions on X oh, that we yeah, can answer good. those for a little sure. bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um cool. All right, so we want to talk about the wiring. So let's go ahead and do that. What's uh, what yeah. sticks out to you? So, here's the um here's the uh, control box here. And uh and in essence what you've got is um this is 220 Okay, so that would be for your welder, <laughs> welder or something. And then you've got two one tens up here, and and this is for me. I don't need any more than that. Yeah. I mean, I can um, I can bring my little microwave and uh, pop it in here, and yeah. I can I can cook dinner. So this is good. They got I like the um, the tie downs. There's quite yeah. a number of them. The D rings over here. Yeah. Yeah. And then up there you've got uh, more of them, and they can be slid back and forth. So again. This is great for what I'm looking for. Um, would I would I classify this as a, the uh, the work truck of my dreams? No. Yeah. I don't. I uh, so having having the rear seats comfortable, a godsend. Yeah. I love that. 
but um, that that dishing back out it makes it so I can't get as much stuff in as I'd want. So again, I'm sure there will be people using this as a pickup truck, yeah. and that's fine. But to me, here's what I like. But this is way up high. But when uh, <clears throat> when I can Let me talk, lower my, it. I'm lower no, it. no, no, you, you, you sure? don't have to. Yeah, okay, that's okay. Fine. okay. When my wife um, allows me <clears throat> to uh, to get quads and maybe even a off-road bike, Come on, motorcycle. Sue. Come on, Sue. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we got something else too. Uh, that's this thing here. Oh, he's got it already filled up with stuff. Yep. But anyways, this is great. You know, we were talking, there's not enough room in the front. This is good enough for Sue and I for groceries. Yeah. So it'd be good to, anyhow, when that happens, I will, um, I will get myself my own ramps and um, I will make it so they fit on here. I'm not sure exactly what I'm, where I'm gonna put them or how I'm gonna make them work. But I know that if I have a quad, in no time. Yeah. And that's kind of, you don't see a work truck um, that's any good with quads or bikes. You can get them in, but they, they just, it doesn't feel right. Yeah. This, I've already done the measuring. This is perfect. Okay. Somebody was thinking, okay, so this is perfect. And then I've got, yeah. I've got my D rings down, down below here so I can hook, I can take the front wheels and lock them into place. I got the D rings there. I got this. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. And this is like made for that. This is perfect for that. Yeah. So one of the things I heard, tell me if you agree about this sentiment. So I, I was reading some of my comments, which sometimes I wish I didn't do, <laughs> no. but you know, you know how it goes. <laughs> yeah. But um, somebody was mentioning that for the workplace or for, or for uh, gig guys and these guys that run small businesses out of their trucks, especially on workplaces, the, yeah. the one advantage they have with the stainless steel is that they don't really have to worry about getting their trucks damaged. They can just take it from job to job. And, you know, because they're, oh, they're also worried about looks a little bit is what I was being told. You know, they want to have the cool truck and the new, especially the boss, you yeah. know, at, at the place. Do you think this has this has a place in that environment or do you see this well, more? You if, know, if I was in the work environment in yeah. construction and my brother and I used to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, guess what? Uh, that uh, you can't, I don't care whether it's made of uh, anything, you know, yeah. uh, you're going to have somebody who is carrying a couple of cement blocks and it's going to be a scratch. It, uh, yeah. This is an impervious to everything. Right. Um, certainly for day to day activities, no problem at all. And you know, what? we got to try something. Sure. Okay. See that? Unlatch that. See, go like this. This is something I did not see before. And I want to, I want to find out if I can get that off. I maybe wanna, uh, Can you lift it up a little bit more maybe? Yeah, maybe. Yep, you can. Okay, there you go. So let's see how far down this goes. Okay, so it's just got a little bit of a tip. And it's got a little bit of spring, like a spring-loaded action maybe in there? Or uh, no, you're bending the material here. Don't okay. do that. Okay. Okay, so at the end of the day, I'm wondering if I can take the whole tailgate off somehow. And I see a little blue thing here. I'm yeah. not sure. Anyhow, okay. um, I didn't notice that before, uh, but... Um, but I'm pretty happy about that too. Hold Make on. sure that that's in all the way. Oh, I see. Okay. Lower part, and then there should be a little clip or something. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, I do like it, and for me, this is uh, um, this is our off-road vehicle for yeah. me. So I I just got to test it out. Um, in the dirt. Awesome. So anyway, what are yeah. the questions that you Yeah, so let's pull up readers. some questions here. So uh, I put out a, uh, a question out there on X. I asked everybody, I'm gonna be talking to the legendary, <laughs> the legendary Sandy Monroe. And if anybody had any, any questions, drop them in the replies below. And we got a few of them. So we'll do some of them. We wow. won't keep you here for a thousand years, Sandy. Oh, uh, wait a minute, if, if we're gonna do that, to, then we can sit down. Just go sit down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, good idea. Here, let me, let me, you got it? What okay. for? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm old, but <laughs> not that old. You got old. there yeah. better than I did. <laughs> yeah. All right, so here we go. So question <sighs> number, oh, did you see that uh, Starship? They made it around, go around the earth and they brought it back. Did you see it? No, I didn't SpaceX see anything. One? We were on the airplane. Oh, you were on the airplane. <laughs> we well, looked out the, well, he How was right by the here? window. You should have saw it. <laughs> you should have saw it. <laughs> what kinds of things uh, do you expect to find when you tear down the new Model 3 and the Cybertruck, and what kinds of things would amaze you? Okay, so I want to know. That's from Mike I'm, Sterner, by the way. I want to okay. make sure I give people a shout out. Yeah. Well, thanks, Mike. Yep. And uh, anyway, so 
the things that are most important to me, I want to know more about the castings. Obviously, that's a big deal. We can, if you go to the other, um, the, uh, the interviews I had with, um, with the five um, uh, VPs of the different areas. Yeah. So you can see that I was pretty excited about that. Next, um, it would be the um, uh, steer by wire. I want to know more about that. Third is the rear steering. The, um, so I'm very big fan of the, um, the uh, Ethernet loop um, because I'm, I'm really excited about knowing how that works. But I'm not a communications expert, and that's mostly software. So for me, it'll all be um, uh, probably over my head. Yeah. I want to know more about the material science and whatnot uh, that, uh, that we're going to find when we get into this. Um, the, uh, the, the front suspension to me is a big deal. The wiper is a big deal. There's a whole bunch of things here that I'm going to be very interested in and in the circuit boards. <clears throat> and when we started, that's where I changed my mind on Tesla. So when we got the, rid of the body and we started looking at the, uh, the circuit boards and whatnot, oh man, yeah. this was as exotic as anything I've ever seen. Yeah. And, and they, they were brilliant. So I'm, I'm looking to see if there's any kind of a step change between what we've seen in the past with Tesla and what, what they might have now. Cool. No, that's great. Yeah, so it's yeah. laundry list. <laughs> yeah, I got a long, I, I got long, a long list. list. Can I have one of your cyber trucks? asks Eric. No. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next question. We were talking about Boeing a little bit. Uh, yeah. But maybe we can skip that as well. Let's see What's that. What's that got to do? With Boeing you? quality issues. That's all That's all they ask. But um, I don't know. We want to keep the cyber truck specific. I, that's, uh, that's what happens when you... Uh, we have a board made up of uh, MBAs and uh, movie stars. Yeah, it's not my. I we don't have them as a. In fact, we got fired from Boeing because they didn't like the way we were running our company. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Cybertruck innovation. This is from from uh, Tate. Cybertruck innovation with the uh, Ethernet ring, 48 volt architecture, and steer by wire. Profound changes. What benefits will they provide in the next gen low cost vehicle? Um, is that do you expect that kind of technology to go oh, into yeah. the next generation? Okay. Absolutely. Because quite frankly, when you move to 48 volts, I, I'm gonna save money on wiring. Uh, and when you when you have 12 volts, you need cables that big, right? Yeah. When you when you move to uh, when you move to 48 volts, you need cables about this big. They get smaller. It's um, Ohm's law. And I don't want to get into that shit. But at the end <laughs> of the day, the higher the voltage, the lower the amperage, yeah. and you get whatever power you need. And at the end of the day, uh, for me, um, I'm moving to 48 volts is going to reduce the wiring sizes. Getting rid of wires is even better, and that's what you get with the Ethernet ring. Um, there's going to be one power line, and um, and a communication will come off the Ethernet ring. So that gets rid of wires, and that's yeah. good. From uh, from a steering system, I don't have the intermediate shaft. I don't have the problems associated with how I have to connect everything together on and on and on, that's gonna make it uh, cheaper. Um, so everything that uh, that happened there, 48 volts ethernet ring and the steer by wire, uh, steer by wire yeah. is gonna be less money. Yeah, okay. Um, this was a very interesting question from Lee. If you could get your hands on any vehicle from around the world, which one would he love to do a teardown on and why? Any vehicle. Well, the Sherpa, yeah. Sherpa, okay. Yeah, that's the. That I'd like to get one of those. I'd like to. I'd like to tear that down. But um, right now, this is the one that I want to tear down because this is the most advanced technologically. This is the one that's going to have keep my attention span. Um, I get, I get kind of bored fast. So uh, this is this is probably the most interesting for me. Cool. Okay. What is your favorite moment in your career thus far? And what's your favorite moment with your family outside of work? Probably when my son was born, mm. as far as I, I can tell you that, that that's a big, big event. Marrying, uh, marrying my, my wife, Susan, I'd be about in the same kind of category. Uh, Work-wise, um, boy, I've had a lot of, really big things happen in my life um there's too many first places I, I will tell you one of the things that was um 
was the most surprising maybe was when my guys came up and said, uh, hey, Sandy, that um, that uh, that Tesla, it looks like they're going to make about 30 uh, percent gross profit. What? <laughs> Get it on pages. OK, <laughs> so so that was uh, that was a big deal. Um, and that happened. Uh, that, that was that was a really big deal. Um, and seeing as we're talking about Tesla's, that that would be it. Yeah. But I've had, I mean, winning car races and sh- there's a been and uh, and when I got promoted at Ford, when I wasn't supposed to be a promotable and getting promoted a bunch of times and winding up at finance staff, that was so. There's there's a bunch of things, but yeah. Well, this what is, else? Uh, you're Seventy five years old and you're thirty five years old at Moron Social. That's right. Now yeah, that's how that's do you feel about big, that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Being seventy five, I. I, it's a number, uh, my grandfather and my dad never made it to 75. <laughs> so, uh, that's kind of a, that's kind of a big deal. Um, and then this year it's 35 years, uh, that wow. I've had, um, uh, we've had a uh, Monroe out open for business and, um, never went bankrupt awesome. Chrysler two or three times, uh, yeah. uh, General Motors, a whole bunch of others, but yeah. we didn't wow. go bankrupt. Amazing. Um, and, uh, and quite frankly, that that was divine intervention. Yeah. That was God blessing us for yeah. sure. Wow. What did That's you say, Eric? Fisker. Have you heard about that? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> Fisker. <laughs> okay, so three years ago, three or four years ago, um, I was approached by um, <clears throat> one of the biggest investors on the planet, or at least in North America, and they came along and said. Um, Hey, we're thinking about putting some money into Fisker. And I said, are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? Fisker is German for you're going to get, yeah, you're going to get screwed. Okay. That's, that's what it is. Don't, oh, don't do God. it. They did it anyway. Yeah. So when, um, Zen Matosha is a friend of mine, he's an investor. He's everybody in the planet knows him <clears throat> anyway. When he sent me the news about Fisker and he oh, <laughs> fell off the table, um, I said, who called this? And he said, you did. <laughs> so uh, so anyway, yeah, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. There are certain things that, um, you know, a lot of analysts will go and do, well, we look back into their, you know, history and we looked at this and we looked at that. Did anybody look at the fact that Fisker's never had a success ever? Right. I mean, what? which analyst would would put this kind of crap down and then when i say something i'm right okay so i'm i'm almost never i won't say anything unless i know i'm right yeah period because i've been called out too many times when i thought i was right and i wasn't right <clears throat> so um um i don't want to talk about yeah, it's okay. what it's else okay. we got here yeah yeah <laughs> this one this one's in- interesting so yeah. if you had a hundred thousand dollars, which module, which model would you buy? The Model S Plaid, the Cybertruck, or the Model Three Refresh Performance? I would probably buy the the, the Model Three, and the reason for that is because I only got a hundred thousand, and this thing will cost you one hundred twenty-five thousand. So that cancels this one right away. Um, I think the Model S is a fine car, but I hate the back seat, and everybody at Tesla knows that. I like the Model 3 a lot. I think it's the best sedan on the planet right now. Um, and the back seat seems to be a lot more comfortable. So, yeah. And then I'd have some jingle in my pocket. Very I mean, I only have to spend half. I could get two of them yeah. for that price. So you could buy one for your wife or your girlfriend, or if it's the other way around, your husband or your boyfriend. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, okay. Uh, a couple more? Sure. Yeah. And uh, until he says, that's it, my arm is tired. We okay. Can do anything you want. <laughs> Uh, let's see how difficult, and, and, I've, and I've heard this one uh, quite a few times as well, which is which is interesting. Uh, this is from Aaron. I want to make sure I give the other person uh, a shout out here. This was a Florida Tesla fan. Um, okay. Let's do where was it? Okay, from Aaron. How difficult are bodywork repairs going to be for Cybertruck? I've heard this a lot of times because of the material they're using. It's going to be an issue. Uh, what are your thoughts about bodywork repairs for Cybertruck? Well, <clears throat> the only I think that the only repairs that you're going to be doing is buffing out scratches. And that's simple. Scotch bright or actually Scotch bright and another thing that we use on stainless steel quite a bit is um 
is uh, Bon Ami, or sorry, Canadian, Bon Ami. Um, okay. So uh, uh, those are the things that I would use on stainless steel. And um, if you get something really deep, um, then uh, anybody in a shop will be able to buff that out. If it's a real crash, um, I, I think you'd have to really be, you'd, you'd have to be in something where you're probably gonna wreck the whole damn car if you're gonna have to do repairs. This yeah. thing is pretty much indestructible. Yeah, so, so it's, it's a rare occurrence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so what happened, I see somebody sent me a picture and it was um, somebody ran into the Beverly Hills sign. Oh um, yeah. Did anybody uh, anybody do any in-depth stuff on that? I like haven't seen happened? anything in depth, wow. no. <clears throat> well, the, the rumor was that a valet ran it into the sign, but it was actually just, that was a rumor. It was actually a person who just ended up in the, Hitting a sign Didn't know what somehow. he was doing. I it? have no, I no idea. Uh, unless it's, I, I no only idea. know one. Um, um, I only know one. Um, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Beverly Hills sign, and you have to be drunk, stupid, or or both high. <laughs> well, maybe you could be high too. It's hard to say. Or all but, three. But anyways, or all three. Yeah. Or maybe you were waving at friends. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah. at the end of the day, I don't know how they did. It. I just uh, wonder uh, what kind of damage there might be. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's uh, definitely interesting. All right, this one's from Jorg. Um, how's your arm feeling? Nice, we got a oh, thumbs good. up. Eric, okay. Eric, can we give a shout out to Eric? Yeah, Eric. Eric. Eric, you're Eric. amazing. Yep. Um, what is your honest opinion about Tesla removing the stocks and rain sensors to save a few dollars instead of looking after the customer? So it's framed in an interesting way, the question, but do, do you have an issue with them removing the stocks? Hell no. Okay. I, I always thought stocks were stupid. I, I tried to get pretty much every OEM that we've ever worked for, get rid of them. Oh no, they're cheap. No, they're not. And by putting everything on the steering wheel, right, left, here's my wipers, but I never have to take my hands yeah. off. I never do anything. I got used I don't to a lot like quicker stocks. than I expected. It's not, as, yeah. it's not as bad as people make it out to be, truly. It's easy. It's easy. So, yeah. and the other thing that uh, the rain sensors, now, I like rain sensors, but they don't always work. And that's what one of the problems that I've got with the Rivian. They don't always work. So if I can turn on my wipers with my finger or just, I don't even do that. Usually I just go down and press the button and wipers, wipers yeah. on, wipers off. It, and it does what it needs to do. Yeah. So. It's just people have to get used to the new way, I guess, more than anything. Well, yeah. I'm sure that they'll figure it out sooner or later. Yeah. All right, let's do uh, let's do maybe one or two more, and then we'll call it here. Um, how how fast do you expect Cybertruck to ramp now that you've maybe have a little bit more exposure to it? Do you think two hundred fifty thousand by next year is realistic? Give them a year. I mean, yeah. If they have a year from now, uh, yeah, I think that that could work. Okay. Yeah, that could probably work because they have a really short cycle. Um, for the most part, they've only got 43 second cycle. Um, I don't know what the um, pain point would be or the pinch point would be, but uh, my guess is they've always hit their numbers in the past. So yeah. it might take them a bit, but a year and uh, and running at 250,000 a year. I don't mean that right. they're gonna run crank. Rate. Yeah. Run rate. Yeah. The run rate would yeah. be like, again, around okay. 40 seconds. Cool. All right, uh, and let's do uh maybe one more actually have you got any women that uh, that that put in i'd like to know what women want uh to say. well no. there, there was a, there was a question about your uh your wife actually should we maybe ask that one? Oh sure that'd be yeah fun. where where was it us okay how uh, did why did she ever marry me <laughs> ask how mrs monroe deals with your energetic madness this is from fee <laughs> she takes drugs <laughs> no no Actually, Sue and I <laughs> dated for 13 years because you think I'm energetic now. Oh, you should have my. seen me when I was in my 40s. Yeah. So, uh, no, Sue and I uh, have a, I am blessed with uh, with the perfect wife. I mean it sincerely. Um, we do have disagreements. She gets nervous about a lot of the things that I do and say. Her interview with, with RJ was excellent. I know. Yeah, I, uh, it really was. I've heard so much about, 
uh, you know, kick the old guy off and uh, put Sue in. Oh and that, uh, you know, <laughs> it's uh, and there you go, Eric. He gave a thumbs everybody. up. Eric gave a thumbs up for yeah. everybody. Well, everybody wants that. to know when I retire so, <laughs> so we can put Sue in play. Sue's actually the president of the company now. Uh, I'm still a CEO, but but uh, but um, everybody kind of wanted me out of the presidential <laughs> role because as a day-to-day -day kind of a job, um, yeah, I'm a, a micromanager. Is that the yeah. word? Yeah. So uh, engineer, engineer, micro. Yeah. Well, engineer. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, I'm. Uh, I but Sue is a lot easier to get along with, although she has her moments as well, <laughs> as uh, many of the people in the company can attest to. But but for the most part, she's less uh, aggressive than I am. Okay. So. Awesome. But I like I say, I am blessed. I I got the best wife. You ever. and I both, man. We're both yeah. blessed with amazing women in yeah. our lives. So and that's yeah. uh, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're looking at the Quran or the Bible or uh, or uh, the Torah. Yeah. Yeah. Everywhere you look around, it says, "Find me the um, find me the the good woman." Is yeah. uh, is the uh, is the big thing for yeah. me. Yep. Yeah. Before we say goodbye, I want to give one last shout out to Cybertruck ATX who let us use their uh, truck for the day. We've had an amazing time talking about the truck, your plans with the teardown, yeah. what Monroe and Associates is up to. And uh, yeah, any any parting words for, for the crowd? Uh, I just like to thank Tesla for all of the um, help that they've given us uh, since we uh, since we bought the uh, the vehicles. Um, just getting the vehicles, and um, I know that they, I don't know who's in charge, probably Elon, but I know that this wasn't supposed to happen, two or three trucks showing up in Michigan. I know it wasn't on the original scheme. They were blessed, uh, we're blessed that they were, they were, they were kind to us. Uh, so my big thank you is, uh, is to the folks at Tesla. And um, so number one, thanks for the trucks. Number two, a different kind of thanks for the trucks. This is a joy to work on. So I'm I'm really really excited about the future. Yeah. I um, I love the vehicles, um, and um, I'm looking forward to exposing all of the uh, all of the really good benefits that this thing has to offer to yeah. the buying public. On behalf of the buying public and everybody who watches <laughs> our videos, I can't freaking wait. <laughs> yep. My yeah. birthday brother, yeah. thank you, thank you so thank much, you. man, for taking yep. the time. Yep. Truly thank an you. honor and yep. a pleasure. Uh, just thank you so much for being so kind with your time. I had such a good time. And thank you, Eric, for putting your arm at yeah. stake here, holding that thing for yeah. an hour and a half, it seems like. And yeah, uh, thank you so much. Monroe and Associates, you can find them on YouTube, on X. Uh, Sandy Monroe, you can find uh, Teardown Titan on X as well. Yeah. You can find Eric as well on X. What's your handle? There you go. Go follow him. <laughs> Very inventive. Yeah. We can. We can. <laughs> Yay, Eric. <laughs> and, and that's why he's the director. <laughs> uh, and yeah, thank you, man. Thank you so much, Sandy. Hey, really thank appreciate you. you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye.